Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yato Nivyat Itaratas Charti Suavigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimedam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargo Misha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaito vocha. Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon munam. 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 Shivadam tapa This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukhamukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidiantak Stohi Badrani Vidu Noti Suhit Satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or for him f hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu abhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naistaki In this way, a, dev a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava kamalo badayaschaye chete tairanavitam stitvam sattve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso, Bhagavat bhakti yogataha, Bhagavat tattva vijnanam, Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya siyante Jasya karmani, jista evatmani swari. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection, and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 29. Vasudevangri Anudhyayan Paribrim Hita Ram Hasa Bhaktya Nirmatita Sena Sesa Kashaya di Sano Regina. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Arjuna's constant remembrance of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna rapidly increased his devotion. And as a result, all the trash in his thoughts subsided. Purport by His Divine Grace, Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Material desires in the mind are the trash of material contamination. By such contamination, the living being is faced with so many compatible and incompatible things that discourage the very existence of spiritual identity. Birth after birth, the conditioned soul is entrapped with so many pleasing and displeasing elements. 
which are all false and temporary. They accumulate due to our reactions to material desires. But when we get in touch with the transcendental Lord in his variegated energies by devotional service, the naked forms of all material desires become manifest and the intelligence of the living being is pacified in its true color. As soon as Arjuna turned his attention towards the instructions of the Lord as they are incul inculcated in the Bhagavad Gita, his true color of eternal association with the Lord became manifest. And thus, he felt free from all material contaminations. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, the material, the material desires in the mind are compared to trash. Trash is something you don't need, you don't want, and oftentimes it's disgusting and it smells bad sometimes. So this trash accumulates life after life by bad association and by uh, receiving false so-called knowledge. But actually it's false misconceptions and speculations. So, Prabhupada says, by such contamination, the living being is faced with so many compatible and incompatible things that discourage the very existence of spiritual identity. So, we can understand incompatible. What, what does he mean by compatible? That means that things that uh, correspond to our desires for sense gratification. And what are incompatible? Things that go against our sense gratification, like failures in our life, in relationships, failures to get things that we want for sense gratification or get the attention of people who we want for sense gratification and so forth. So compatible and incompatible things that discourage the very existence of spiritual identity. What is a spiritual identity? That is, Jivera Swarupahaya Nityera Krishna Das. The real position or the real constitutional position of the living entity is to be the eternal servant of Krishna. So whenever there's sense gratification, we lose the taste for devotional service to Krishna and we become obsessed with desires for sense gratification. <clears throat> so this is going on birth after birth. And Prabhupada says the conditioned soul is entrapped with so many pleasing and displeasing elements, which are all false and temporary. <laughs> now, how can we say they're all false and temporary? Well, false in the absolute sense that they're not eternal. While they're going on, they seem real, but when they're over, it's all a dream. There's nothing tangible left. Let's say two people were married, they were very happy for a certain period, then they got into a lot of dissension, and arguing, and disagreements, and then they finally divorced and and ended up with a bitter conclusion uh, and and then sometimes they remember the good days when they were together and then they also remember the bad days and the whole thing is bittersweet and bewildering so in that sense, it's false because it comes to an end and, you, and all, all that's left is some memory. And therefore, it's false and temporary. Uh, it, it actually happened, but it happened on a false premise that I'll be happy through sense gratification with this person. Uh, 
so if it's a false premise, the whole thing ends up being false, uh, even though one experienced it. So for example, you can go to a movie and experience something that you've never experienced before. Uh, is that experience real? Well, it seems real, but after the movie is over, uh, you realize that, first of all, it was temporary. Second of all, it influenced you it, with some emotional responses, like you might have cried or you might have been afraid or you might have been enthralled. And, but after all is said and done, it was, it's illusory because it was temporary to, even when it was happening, it was not real. It was just, uh, just like one time a person was watching a movie and someone was being choked in the movie. And this person got so involved that he ran up to the screen try and save the woman that was being choked. But when he got there, he saw that it was just uh, black and white dots on a, on, a, on a white screen. There was no woman there, and there was no one choking her. It looked like it from a distance, but when he got closer, he saw that it was just a flat screen with, with, with shade and light. So, uh, that whole experience is an illusion. The experience in the movie theater of the emotional response to what one is seeing. Now, in, real, in, in what, what you might call real life, there is a real person. And there can be uh, scenes such as uh, loving affairs and scenes such as arguments and scenes such as, you know, one person choking the other person. Now, when it's all over and, t and you realize it was temporary and it's just like a dream when it's all over, right? Even though you actually experienced it. So, uh, the movie is complete illusion and the real life ordeal ends up being illusion because it's going to be over and you can't repeat it again. It's only just a memory, right? So here we have this dilemma of pleasing and displeasing elements, which are all false and temporary. They accumulate due to our reactions to material desires. But when we get in touch with the transcendental Lord in his variegated energies, by devotional service. The naked forms of all material desires become manifest. Now, why does he say the naked forms? Well, uh, if you're naked in public, let's say you walk out in the public and you forgot to put your clothing on. Sometimes people do that. And then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's looking at you and people are laughing and and somebody gets upset and says, why are you walking around like naked? And you suddenly go, oh my God, I walked out of the house naked, right? So uh, when, when you say naked, uh, he says here, but when we get in touch with chance and the Lord and his very good energies by devotion, so the naked forms of all material desires become manifest. So it's just like uh, showing your naked body in public and there's some shame involved with it. And there's disapproval of it. Uh, of course, you know, if, if you're a member of, uh, uh, you know, a naked club of people, then, you know, all that goes uh, under the bus. But in general, uh, people are ashamed to show their naked body in public. So here, it means that there's something wrong with it. And uh, for a human being to walk around naked in public. Like one time, we, we were on a morning walk with Prabhupada in the, the, the Jardin de Tuileries, that's the, the uh, park uh, around the Louvre, which is the biggest and most famous uh, museum of, of history in Paris. 
and, and there's a nice park surrounding it. You walk through to go into the building. So we walk into that park. This is early in the morning. It was a nice day. Uh, it was the early part of the day, around 7 o'clock in the morning in the summertime. And Prabhupada stops, and he's looking at a, at a statue, a Greek statue. And he says, this is illicit art. Now, the Greeks, the statue is a, is a, a Greeks, uh, might be a demigod, and he's naked. You know, his genitals are showing and everything. And then, uh, you know, we were trying to figure out why is he saying this is illicit art. And Prabhupada answered the question. He said, if a real man was standing here like this, the police would come and arrest him. <laughs> so so it, uh, he said, that's why it's illicit art. <laughs> of course, they're not going to arrest the statue that's standing there naked, right? But if a real person was standing there, they would be arrested. So the, the naked truth means uh, naked in the sense it's revealed to be wrong. And, uh, and the naked truth or the naked forms of all material desires become manifest. So when you're, in other words, when you're uh, in touch with the transcendental Lord in his variegated energies by devotional service, the naked forms of all material desires become manifest. Right? In other words, you suddenly see all these desires that you accumulated in this life and in the previous life, they're all disgusting. And Prabhupada wrote in a letter, he said, that you think sex is nice, but actually it's nasty. It's only because of Maya you think it's nice. <laughs> so uh, those types of statements are shocking for new devotees. You know, you read that, what? What is he saying? <laughs> you know, but actually, when you get more experience in life, you realize he's telling the truth. And, and very few people are willing to accept it, you know. But it is the actual truth. So, therefore, he says, the naked forms of all material desires become manifest. And the intelligence of a living being is pacified in its true color. Uh, this is all, you know, uh, in this, you could call it high English. You know, he's, he's explaining things in a, in, uh, in, in a unique way. So, when he says, the intelligence of a living being is pacified in its true color. So, what does that mean exactly? Well, the, the intelligence used for sense gratification is agitated. It's not pacified. But intelligence used in Krishna consciousness becomes peaceful because it's dealing with the truth that's eternally true, that's eternally real. It never lets you down, whereas sense grat temporary sense gratification at one point lets you down and and then you realize the whole thing might have been a dream it's, it's 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 only existing as a dream now it's not there anymore it's not uh what you would say consistently experienced throughout all time whereas if you come in contact with uh, uh let's say krishna's pastimes and, and variegated energies that experience through devotional service, then you, your mind is pacified and in its true color. This is the real, uh, the real existence of the mind and, and, or intelligence. It's peaceful. It's full of positive desires and thoughts to please the Lord. There's nothing negative. So as soon as Arjuna turned his attention toward the instructions of the Lord as they are inculcated or given or taught in the Bhagavad Gita, his true color, again he's using the word color, of eternal association with the Lord. So this word color is a metaphor. The true color of eternal association with the Lord became manifest and thus he felt freed from all material contaminations. So 
if you associate with the Lord, yeah, it leads to becoming free of all material contaminations. Therefore, the whole purpose of Krishna consciousness is to purify a person of all these misconceptions and false desires and false memories of sense gratification. And so they can become, they have freedom, freedom from these delimiting or limiting uh, thoughts and desires and, and remembrances. And one becomes free now to experience transcendental love and devotion for Krishna. Okay, we'll stop there. Are there any questions? Because you're excited to come to the class every day and hear more and participate in it and give your, uh, give your realizations also from things that you've read or heard, it becomes an exciting experience. This is the real pleasure to be able to sit in a room with no noise, no interruption, and focus completely on the Lord. Right. This is the real pleasure. Just like someone else said, no, the real pleasure is to go to the casino and have the excitement of gambling and drinking liquor. Well, no, that's, that only creates anxiety in the end. But this is the real pleasure, is sitting comfortably, no, it's quiet, no disturbance, and being able to hear transcendental descriptions of the Lord. This is the real pleasure of the devotee. And then being able to participate in the discussions and, and churn more and more uh, nectar. And this sustains us the rest of the day. You know? And then we're excited to have this experience again. Just like uh, a, a rogue person is excited to have more and more sense gratification, right? As soon as it's over, then they start desiring more. Well, uh, if that's a phenomenon in the material world, then you can see the, the same phenomenon dovetailed to Krishna consciousness is possible. That we hear something that excites us in the morning and then, and then all day long we're thinking about it and then we're anxious to get more it never stops. Any other questions? Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jay. Thank you very much.